are again. Today we'll talk about action. Action is a huge item because everyone inevitably has to take decisions in life what to do. And it's not always easy to know what is good and what is bad. So let's talk about this because if we look on the Frotan Life tool, we see that action is on the third level of consciousness and automatically there is a saboteur on the second level of consciousness. And when we look on the second level of consciousness, we, th we see that there is an illusion being to fail is possible. Failing, of course, being linked to the fear of failing. So maybe we can talk about that in a sense that I think that on the second level, the balance could be spontaneity. What do you think about that? It's, it's spontaneity and spontaneity is, is being in the moment, allowing what is in the moment to come, come forth in truth. It, it's um, attunement to a, a, an inner voice, uh, the still small voice within that is always there prompting and guiding us if we would only listen to it. And the number of times when he hears oneself, one does something and you think after it's, oh God, I knew I shouldn't have done that. Oh, I wish I had said that. Because the inner voice was saying, don't do it, don't say it. But we do it anyway because we override it. But if we could all train ourselves to, to listen to that still small voice within, we would have these situations arising or we would have a lot of wonderful things happening because we were trusting the inner voice. And so often people say to me, oh, do you think this was true or was it just my imagination? And I say, well, it's your imagination because that's how your inner voice speaks to you. It can't reach you through your mind. It speaks to you through, through the soul. The imagination is the instrument of the soul. Well, it seems that we didn't learn really to listen to this inner voice. No, no, because we were given authorities by our parents that told us what was right and what was wrong. We were not given a chance to express uh, our truths. We were just given a set of rules. This is what you live by. This is how you do it. This is right. This is wrong. And it might have contradicted completely the true nature of the child of you and me. But we didn't have a chance. I was never allowed to contradict anything my mother said. How dare you speak to your mother like that? Go to your room at once, you know? If I dare to have my own truth. So what would you give um, as advice to someone who wants to learn about this inner voice, wants to listen to it? Is it, is it really a voice or is it something else that manifests itself? It can be a, a, a voice, uh, it can be just a feeling, it can be a, yeah. Uh, it comes sometimes as a thought, an idea into your mind, but you will recognize its truth because normally there's some kind of physical sign that goes with it. Uh, that the body is so supportive of, of, of truth, the body cannot lie. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I uh, and I think also when it's truth, uh, really your soul, there comes peace. That's the problem solved. Uh, thinking about it doesn't give you the answers, but when you can stop thinking and hear truth speaking, immediately there's, oh yes, of course. Then they think, oh, why didn't I think of that before? But then you think, well, of course, thinking about it was what very, the very thing that stopped me from getting that truth. Well, is it then a kind of unlearning instead of learning that we have to go through yeah, but I feel now at this particular time that we are living in and why you and I have these conversations and what your project is about, uh, there's such a support coming from universal energy. It's like we are really being carried in a way and guided forward and like this being not pushed in, 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 in an angry, frustrated sense, but there's just a oil being injected into the wheels of our lives that bring us into all the right circumstances now to make these changes much more easily. I think this is the, the, one of the beautiful things about this age in which we are living is that uh, we are more receptive to um, these impulses and there are great teachers jumping on earth to bring us 
teachings about this as well. I don't think there's ever been a time where there's been such a, a, a great resource of great teachers coming because it's needed. The, the, the uh, Eckhart Tollas, the Adya Shantis, the, the Dalai Lamas, other great mystics, some people working in very small scale who nobody's ever heard of, but they're just as important as the people who are getting all the fame. One doesn't have to be famous to be an effective teacher. You can have just a very small group of followers or people coming to you. It's every bit as important to somebody who has a million uh, followers on Facebook. You know? Not about scale, it's simply about the, the quality. And yeah, you never know whose life it is you're affecting that might go on to affect the lives of many. You know, so it, it's a. Uh... Oh, yes, and we, we talked about um, the illusion on the second level of consciousness being the illusion of time. Do you think that spontaneity is like more living in the moment and that the information of the universal intelligence could be the right information in the moment? Yeah, time, timing is, is uh, well, that's why uh, White Bull's book, God is never late, but never early either. You know, it, there's so much deep truth in, in that, that, just the title of the book. Everything happens at the perfect time. And if you're already having that faith and it works, it works out. My own experience of moving home when I had a possibility to buy somewhere, it was the perfect timing because this apartment became available. I knew a moment I saw it, this is for me. And I've been there three years and I've regularly looked at what is for sale in, in the town where I live. There's been nothing in three years that I thought, I like that place. This has been the best place for sale in three years for me. And it came on the market when it was possible for me to get it. So, if I understand, if we could connect really to this universal intelligence and use it in daily life, is it not so that we would have more and more faith in it? Because in the concrete, it helps us uh, further, it's, it's, it's uh, supporting us. Yeah, and I think there are two levels of faith and trust too. There's the, the, the faith and trust that grows through life experience and realizing these things are always working out. But there's a deeper level that's always working, which is if you can be connected to that, then things will always work out. But sometimes people have to go through the experience of losing trust and rebuilding it and, and so on. But there are, there are two levels at which it operates. And I, make no, I take no credit myself for the faith that I have, because I believe it's just something I inherited, because I grew up with all these stories of my grandparents and how they lived a life of faith. So I never questioned that things wouldn't be the same for me as it was for them. And that, that's how it's happened for me. So I, I take no credit. It's nothing to do with me being more special or different because I have that. It's just what I, what I grew up in, that environment. So you can imagine how important it is um, in education to bring uh, this, what we're talking about. Many people, when I uh, am in a consultation, they say about the fruit and life, you should put this in the schools. And yes, it's true, the education is so important. It was also because what he was doing was not for his personal gratification, it was for others. But the reality is also that many people hurt other people's, you know, like holding on to their egocentricity, you know, lying or cheating or um, being centered on, on, on their own importance. Yeah, so it arises out of a deep woundedness and a deep unconsciousness mm -hmm. that people will do that. So well, this comes from the belief in the artificial power, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because it is, it's, it's all stories around power. Money is a currency of power. So, so if somebody has lots of money, they think themselves powerful, but, it, but it's not real power. The only power is in love. True power is in love, and love is the absence of fear. And, and therefore, no compensation needed. No compensation needed, because your needs are always met. Yeah, it's whatever you need. Weibel says if you need to have a castle, you'll have a castle. If you need to be living in a caravan, you will have a caravan. So whatever is corresponding to your soul's need will be there. 